Welcome to the Bible Forum. It is Sunday night, September 8, 2019. I'm Warren Sprouse. You're on the Bible Forum. In this uh, beginning segment, each week we look at issues, a number of issues, quick little shots at different things that have occurred during the week, get you up to speed, maybe some things you haven't heard about before. Uh, a lot of my listeners, viewers are very much in tune with what's going on, but maybe not in every regard. I read across an article this week uh, talking about a Christian politician. Uh, this would be uh, in Finland. And be I say that because I can't pronounce his name. But this Christian politician is currently under police investigation because he went online and posted scripture. And the scripture was pointed against the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland. Apparently they are participating in Helsinki Pride events, whatever that is. We, that's important out there in Europe, not so much here. Uh, but according to a website called Faith Wire, uh, they're telling us that these folks are now risking, have risked uh, some legal action. But they ask the question, how can the church's doctrinal foundation, the Bible, be compatible with lifting up the lifting up of shame and sin as a subject of pride. Uh, photos were posted uh, of Romans chapter 1, 24 through 27 uh, back in June. The passage reads, Therefore God gave them over in the sinful de desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies and with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. And because of this, the Bible says, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committing shameful acts with other men receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bible, that may have come to you as a shock that 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Spirit of God about what's happening in our culture today. The post over there in Finland prompted authorities to investigate the former Minister of Interior for something called ethnic agitation. Uh, the pre-trial investigations have yet to be completed. The officer in charge has said, quote, police will provide more details once the investigations have been completed or presented to a prosecutor for consideration of charges, end of quote. There will be no further comments prior to that. But the woman in question is no stranger to controversy. In 2013, she expressed concern over her country's care for unborn babies. She wrote, quote, The law on animal protection gives better protection to an animal about to be put down than the law on abortion does to an unborn child. It is forbidden to cause the animal pain when slaughtering it. But no one dares to even discuss the painfulness of abortion. Abortion is defended on the grounds that the fetus is not a human person. Even though it is biologically human, from the moment of conception. This critic, uh, again, I cannot pronounce her name, is not concerned about the charges against her. She says, I'm not worried about myself, as I trust this will not go to the prosecutor. For my side of it, I hope, she said, this does lead to Christian self-censorship. Did you read here the kerfluffle uh, this week about Drew Brees, quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, uh, engaging students in something called live out, quote, live out their faith. 
and bring their Bibles to school on October 3rd as part of an event sponsored by Focus on the Family. Drew Brees is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, NFL's all-time leading passer, recorded a video to promote Bring Your Bible to School Day. He said, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5, 7, which reads, for we live by faith, not by sight. In the video, he says, so I want to encourage you to live out your faith on Bring Your Bible to School Day, to share God's love with friends, and you're not alone. Now, Bring Your Bible to School Day, according to the event's website, is a day in which students across the nation will celebrate religious freedom and share God's love with their friends. I think people are getting re really tired of being attacked every time they mention God. Here's the liberals jumping up when Drew Brees is making this statement, striking back, accusing him of being a bigot. A bigot is a fiercely loyal to his own group, whether it be religion, race, politics, etc. But a bigot is also intolerant of all those who are differing from him or her. And therein lies the rub. The Christian is one who is zealous for his or her belief without being intolerant of contrary beliefs, and therefore not a bigot. And Christians live this out every day. They live among, work with, marry people who do not share their religious convictions. But in the bigoted, narrow world of the ultra-leftist, you are either with them or against them. There is no middle ground. Oh wait, isn't that the definition of a bigot? Just saying. President Trump famously pointed out during his successful 2016 presidential campaign that some people entering the United States illegally, unlawfully, are bringing drugs and crime including rape. Liberals, globalists, and others jumped up and ridiculed him for such a statement. But now, a Justice Department report by the Bureau of Justice Statistics confirms the President's concern for what he has called an invasion. It seems from 1998 to 2018, the share of all federal arrests by country of citizenship rose from 28% to 40% for Mexican citizens, while only from 1% to 20% for citizens of Central American countries. At the same time, the rate fell from 63% to 36% for U.S. citizens. The report was spotlighted on judicialwatch.com, which noted that, quote, the alarming increase in immigration crimes from 20,942 back in 1998 to 58,031 in 2017, and an astonishing jump to 108,667 in 2018, marking a breathtaking 400 and 19% increase in just two decades. That's 20 years for you public school educated children. Bob Unruh writes for WND.com, usually has things worth reading. This week he wrote at issue, the increasing influence and success of the enemy of our souls. He says the Bible describes throughout the tension between God and Satan. And as we near the end of the age, Satan is increasingly winning the battles. Morality, violence, marriage, gender, Christian so-called religions, the rise of the occult. But all of these are just symptoms. Case in point. 
A Philadelphia, Pennsylvania non-discrimination policy now requires all foster care agencies to place children with same-sex couples. These parents have always been left off the list due to an antiquated idea that two lesbians or two homosexual men were not the best choices when it comes to placing small children in their care. Something about their sexual drive overriding their native morality. Predictably, the religiously motivated providers and parents are outraged. The city has ordered Catholic school social, or Catholic social services to change its religious doctrine if it wants to continue placing foster children as it has done for at least a hundred years. The city's new non-discrimination policy requires any partner agency to place children with same-sex couples. Now, predictably, Catholic Social Services have brought a lawsuit against the city. And 44 members of Congress sent a brief to the U.S. Supreme Court, along with many others, in support of this lawsuit, asking for a reversal due to the grave harm this will do to children. Now, traditionally, the problems with placing children in homes, not of their own family, has been men abusing little girls. And so now, by government fiat, it's apparently open season. Not that every same-sex couple is going to sexually molest a child that's not their own. But it is in the DNA to do so. You say, oh, come on, it's not like that. Have you seen the statistics? This sort of crime is generally kept quiet until the child is an adult and can think for themselves. Then they want justice. So, so why wave a red flag in front of the bull? Or in this case, even the cow? Why tempt fate with the lives of these already emotionally disrupted children? And the only answer you can come up with is we're willing to do this to children in order to satisfy this new social paradigm that we're all the same and nothing is taboo. Tell that to the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of young children who have been sexually molested. Did you read about Benny Hinn this week? It's not really news news. It's been around for a while. But it did kind of burst out in the public this week. Benny Hinn has renounced the prosperity gospel. Yeah, Benny Hinn. And apparently he's serious about it. One of the world's most well-known preachers, preachers of the so-called prosperity gospel, said this week that he's correcting his views and no longer believes the health, wealth theology he formerly espoused. He said this during a September 2nd broadcast of Your Love World. He said that the gospel is not for sale. He went on to say, quote, I'm correcting my own theology, and you all need to know it. Because when I read the Bible now, I don't see the Bible in the same eyes I saw the Bible 20 years ago. Now, in case you're not up to speed, the definition of the prosperity gospel is the idea that God wants all Christians to be wealthy and healthy. And according to this belief, God's blessings are released when Christians donate money to health, wealth, preachers, and ministers and ministries. Not when they give money to your church, only if they give to a health, wealth, gospel-oriented ministry. Now, ChristianHeadlines.com previously reported one of those evangelists, Joyce Meyer, who had said earlier this year that she now rejects much of the prosperity theology she formerly taught. So Benny Hinn is now the second preacher from that group to renounce the movement's core doctrine. He said, I don't want to hurt my friends whom I love, who believe things I don't believe anymore. And I will tell you now something that is going to shock you. 
I think it's an offense to the Lord. He said, it's an offense to say, give a thousand dollars. I think it's an offense to the Holy Spirit, and I'm done with it. I think that hurts the gospel. So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life, and frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. He added that when people, quote, invite me to telethons, I think they will not like me anymore. If I hear one more time, break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. I think that's buying the gospel, Benny Hinn said. Buying the blessing. That's grieving the Holy Spirit. If you do not give because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. Giving has become a gimmick. And he says, it's making me sick to my stomach. So he's already corrected his friend and pastor, Dan Willis. So I love Dan. And I said, don't you dare preach that message again. I don't want to get to heaven and be rebuked. I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. The blessings of God are not for sale. The miracles are not for sale. And prosperity is not for sale. As an aside, a study cited in the 2011 book Health, Wealth, and Happiness Critiquing the movement found that 50 of the 260 largest churches in America promote the prosperity gospel. And finally, as if we don't have enough already. The official catalog of this year's Scholastic Book Fair shows the publisher taking a hard turn toward literature that highlights issues of sexual identity, intersectionality, and social justice. It was first documented in the publication called The Federalist. For example, instead of introducing children to Shakespeare, Romeo, Juliet, Scholastic is now promoting a book called Star Crossed. It's a bise bisexual version of the play, Romeo and Juliet. The story centers around a female character who plays Romeo in a middle school play and ends up falling in love with the also female Juliet. The catalog ponders, referring to a middle school student, quote, could she really be crushing on both boys and girls? Another scholastic promoted book features a girl who realizes that her dad is, quote, secretly dating her best friend's mom, both of whom are divorced. I'm old. I remember Scholastic Publications. Do you remember Scholastic Publications 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago? Quality publication. Gone. What's happened to our world? Hmm? It's not just, well, we feel this or we feel that or that. Something seriously evil has taken over in our world. wonder what that is or who that is. Just saying.